Good evening everyone. Indiana State and Wichita State haven't been up since last year's MVC tournament. The Shocks won that one, but the Sycamores looking for revenge. A doubleheader today thanks to the weather postponement last night. AJ Ladwig on the mound trying his best to get Wichita State the win. Eight innings, eight strikeouts for Ladwig on the afternoon. Casey Gillespie, one of the best hitters in the country. He had two of the four Wichita State base hits in game one. One of them here to left field, but the Shockers couldn't capitalize. The first blow in the game came in the fourth inning with a runner on second, Mike Fitzgerald. Right center field, Jacob Hayes shows some good speed coming around to score and put the Sycamores on the board. The Shockers did a nice job of minimizing the damage in the fourth. Tyler Wampler hits a slow roller to short, 6-5 the put out and Fitzgerald's out at third. But Wichita State just couldn't get the offense going and ISU added some insurance runs in the eighth. Jeff Zahn drills it off the right, right center field wall. A couple more runs come around to score for the Sycamores. Indiana State takes game one of the doubleheader 3-0. The Sycamores also able to take game two and earn the sweep 3-2. Game three is set for tomorrow at noon. The Shockers softball team was also on the road today, taking on Evansville in a doubleheader. The Shocks fell 4-3 in the first game, but were able to regroup and dominate the second game 12-4. Shocks advance 8-2. Game 3 of the series will be tomorrow at noon. The Royals have a knack for keeping fans on the edge of their seats. Game 2 against the White Sox today was the prime example of Kansas City's uncanny ability to come up clutch in critical two-out situations. Former Shocker Connor Gillespie was able to start the momentum the Sox needed to tie the game at three, but two outs in the eighth inning and Salvador Perez comes up to the plate. No hesitation here with the go-ahead RBI double to beat the White Sox four to three. He's a clutch player. I mean, I mean, he really is. Um, he's a guy that does a really, really good job of getting up for those situations, but not to the point where it takes him out of his at-bat. You know, he gets up for those situations, but he stays within himself. Bruce Chen had a good day on the bump, pitching six and a third innings with seven strikeouts. The Royals will wrap up their series with the White Sox tomorrow at 110. James Shields is set to pitch that one. They also purchased the contract of pitcher Aaron Brooks from AAA Omaha today. The Sunflower Showdown on the baseball diamond have the Jayhawks and the Wildcats looking for a foothold in the Big 12. We saw a much different KU team in Game 2 than we did yesterday. Jayhawks up 4-1 in the fourth. Dakota Smith keeps it going as he grounds the slider through the gap to left. Michael Sutters rounds third and easily slides on into home to make it 5-1. 2-1, to one, the count one out. Aldridge keeps that one fair down the line. And their second double of that inning tacks on one more run, 6-1 to one Hawks. Bottom of the eighth, Mitch Meyer lifts that bad boy all the way to the left center fence. Tanner Davini makes the turn and goes ahead first into goes head first into home. Wildcats start chipping back, but it's way too late. Hawks take the game 6-3. to three. The winner of tomorrow's game at 1 will take the series. A former Bishop Carroll Golden Eagle won't be playing in the Sooner Spring game. Find out why when we come back. It was an early season test for Sporting KC tonight between the MLS finalists. Against one of the best teams in the league, Real Salt Lake, Kansas City held their own. A good defensive performance, Sporting KC held Real Salt Lake to only four total shots. They just couldn't drop anything in the back of the net, though. A corner for Sporting KC there. Check out the leaping save. That was one of many opportunities Kansas City needed to convert. Matt Beasler with the throw in. KC has a shot, but it would bounce off the goalie's palms. This one would end nil-nil. That's right, a tie. And Kansas City manager had this to say about ending in a scoreless tie against such a dominant opponent. I thought we dominated the whole game. We were in possession. I thought we passed around them. We found everything except the back of the net. Hit the post. I mean, we are all over them. Unfortunately, we just couldn't stick it in the net, but we had a very, very good performance. The defending CPIFL champs, the Wichita Wild, are on the road tonight as well, putting their perfect 3-0 on the line against Sioux City. A great game early. The Bandits only had a 29-24 lead at halftime. Although the Bandits had a solid lead, the Wild mounted a huge comeback, and Gerald Kelly scored two touchdowns for the Wild to open up the fourth quarter tied at 45. The Bandits led 48-45 with two minutes left in the game. 
Blake Bell's transition to tight end will have to be put on hold. The former Bishop Carroll Golden Eagle will be out for the rest of the spring due to a sprained knee, according to ESPN. It shouldn't require surgery, and Bell should be ready to get back on the field in time for preseason in August. The Final Four just became the Final Two, and the 2014 National Championship is set. Just take a quick look at the Final Four matchups tonight. Number 7 seeded UConn upset the number 1 seed Florida Gators this evening, 63-53. The win ended the Gators' 30-game winning streak, which ironically began after the Huskies beat Florida on December, 20, on December 2nd. UConn shot 63% in the process, dominating the Huskies' national championship opponent will be either Kentucky or Wisconsin. You can catch the national championship game right here on KWCH 12 on Monday night. That's it for sports, but stay tuned. More eyewitness news is after the break.